Ceratopsians, better known as the horned dinosaurs, are one of the most diverse groups of dinosaurs from the Cretaceous. You have the lumbering behemoths with enormous skulls like Pentaceratops, the small ankle biters like Aquilops, and the titans with elaborate horns like Ineosaurus. The most famous example of this family is, of course, Triceratops. Everyone is familiar with the three-horned face, but what a lot of people don't realize is that the animal has had a taxonomic nightmare. From this messy taxonomic history, one mystery Ceratopsian has been floating around the world of paleontology. But first, a little history. In the first 135 years since its discovery, over 16 different species of Triceratops were named based on various fossils from the animal itself. Thanks to painstaking work in the 1990s and early 2000s, there are only two recognized species of Triceratops known today, T. porosus and T. horridus. With so many species, it's no surprise that there have also been several genera named based on misidentified Triceratops remains. Examples of these invalid genera include Polynax, Ergosaurus, and Agathomus, just to name a few. In 1905, a new species of horned dinosaur was described by none other than Othniel Charles Marsh. Not long after his famous Bone Wars dispute with fellow paleontologist Edward Drinker Cope. The animal he described was a new genus and species of Chasmosaurine ceratopsian, which was named Diceratops hatcheri. The name means two horned face, as the animal was incredibly similar to the famous Triceratops. Instead of a nasal horn, though, Diceratops has a smooth bump similar to the thick skulls of pachycephalosaurids. Eventually, the name Diceratops was replaced with the name Nedoceratops. The word Nedo is a Russian prefix that means insufficient, in reference to the animal's non-existent nasal horn. In addition to this nasal bump, Nedoceratops differs from its Triceratops cousin in the position and shape of its brow horns. These horns are enormous and point straight up in an almost vertical position with a slight curve towards the snout. So, this is a new genus, right? Netoceratops has enough differences to be its own genus, right? Well, unfortunately for our two-horned friend, there is some controversy behind this animal's validity. The best way to tell Ceratopsians apart from one another is by looking at their frills. However, the saddle-like frill of Nedoceratops is nearly identical to that of another Ceratopsian that lived alongside, Triceratops. Even ignoring the frills, there's little difference between the two animals. While the horns of Nedoceratops are more vertical, this leads to another contradiction. The remains of Triceratops show numerous examples of individual variation in horn shape and length. So who's to say that the vertical horns of Nedoceratops aren't just another kind of variation? The blunt nasal horn can also be explained away as another kind of variation within the Triceratops genus. But it can also be explained away as the horn being crushed during the fossilization process. One thing I've noticed that hasn't been brought up yet is the idea that Nedoceratops is an example of a Triceratops that lost its nasal horn as a calf. In juvenile Triceratops, the nasal horn is unfused to the skull, but grows in as the animal ages. So it's in my somewhat educated opinion that this could explain the lack of a nasal horn if it turns out to be another example of Triceratops. All that being said, there are a few authors and paleontologists who considered Nedoceratops to be a valid genus. Some have brought up the idea that the animal could be a transitional species, serving as an early ancestor or midway point between Triceratops and another Ceratopsian, Taurosaurus. This debate over validity rages on, and as of making this video, there is no end in sight. 
As a paleontology student myself, I suppose I have to give my own opinion on this debate? Personally, I'm a bit skeptical as well. While I do agree with the theory that Netoceratops could be an ancestor of Triceratops and Taurosaurus, there is also the slight chance that it's just a unique individual of Triceratops itself. I would love for this animal to be a valid genus of Ceratopsian, but for now, all I can do is just hope for the best. But that is the end of the line for this video. Now that finals are finally over for college, I have a whole host of videos I want to make this summer. I plan on making a few more educational videos, some more paleo art videos, maybe a documentary review, and maybe even some fictional creatures at some point could appear on this channel. Well, that's it for now. See you around.